What's going on everyone? I always get asked how do I back up my Raspberry Pi? So today we're going to do a little bit of a video on how I do that and why I would do that. When using the Raspberry Pi as a desktop, you tend to build up a lot of files, no different than when you're using your main computer or a laptop or anything else, and you need to save that stuff. But with the Raspberry Pi, if you're doing a lot of updating and a lot of other little things, chances are you're probably going to end up having to wipe your operating system and then put it back on. No different than like a Windows computer or, you know, a Linux uh, operating system. It just happens where you have to do a fresh install. But how do we back up and keep that information safe and secure so when we do come back, we can just quickly sync it all up? Well, as you can tell in the top bar here, I have this sync thing here, and that's what we're gonna be using today. We're gonna to be installing sync thing on the Raspberry Pi 4, and as well as uh, we're going to be installing it on a Windows 7 computer that I have sitting behind me there on the desk. And that will be used as my file um, backup location. The great thing about SyncThing is you're able to do it as a local cloud save. So there is other options that you would be able to do with this as far as uh, adding it to... Um, whatever else you could do a docker for it or a bunch of other things where you're able to save uh, your stuff on a nice you know um, somewhere else anyways you could even do it on another raspberry pi you could do it on whatever you want it's pretty much any system that you can get sync thing on you can do it and back it up to with that being said, it's one of the few that is free for the Raspberry Pi that I found to be um, really nice and simple to use once it's set up. So let's go ahead and we will start this out by going to syncthing.net and we'll get started here. The first thing we will do is we will install it on the Raspberry Pi and then we'll go ahead and we'll bring up the Windows 7 computer and we will then install it on there and we'll start to get uh, a file uh, folder synced up with the Raspberry Pi as well as my folders for the Raspberry Pi synced over to there. So that way I have everything all in one spot and if anything ever happens to this, I'm able to quickly get it all back and I don't have to worry about uh, did I save that to Google Drive? Did I save it to somewhere out in the clouds somewhere? This is a local uh, cloud storage uh, sort of solution uh, by just quickly doing it on your local network, which is kind of, of nice because then you could actually have it so that source doesn't have access to the internet and that way you know that uh, that data is constantly protected. So here we go. We'll just start here at syncthing.net and then we're just gonna go to the download section here. So there is a bunch of uh, different options here. You can see that you can have, uh, there is an Android app, all the source codes, everything here, like basically anything that you can think of, this is gonna work for it. So you have so many different options available. You can either install via basically this option here which will get it installed pretty quickly or you can just install the arm uh, package through here but for this one what we're going to do is we will try to add it through this selection here just because then if there's any updates or anything it's automatically going to add those updates to our computer so we're just going to hit Control alt and t we're going to bring up a terminal window here and then we're going to go ahead and just start copying and pasting the lines below here. So control C and we'll bring it over here, paste that in, add that. There we go. Said OK. And then we're going to add this one here. Control C. Paste that guy. Hit enter and then 
sudo apt get update and then install sync thing. So control C and it's just going to run through them this way. It's going to do the update. Now we can see here that sync thing is in there. So that's perfect. And we'll just let it finish uh, the updates here and then we'll go ahead and install that. And there we go. So I am just using the uh, stable release. Uh, if you choose to use the, I guess the candidate uh, channel, you can definitely go ahead and do that. Completely up to you, but for me, just rocking the stable versions and allowing them to update once those other ones become stable. And there we go, we're all done. Now that we have it installed, we can go ahead and we can close the terminal window here. Now we don't need any more information from here. If you want, go through it, check out whatever you want. But for the most part, our installation is done. It's complete, we're ready to continue on. So I'm just gonna go ahead for now and I'll close it out, I don't need that. So then I'm gonna go to internet here from the Pi icon here and then you're going to see start sync thing and start web UI. So the first thing we want to do is start sync thing. I think if you start the web UI it's going to uh, also uh, start that but we want to make sure the service is running in the background prior so I always just do that. Um, that looks like it's probably running. We could check that by just double clicking here uh, and bringing this up and we should be able to see that sync thing is running in the background now so that's good we have that up and running and now let's go ahead and we will bring up the web UI this is gonna launch another web browser window here and then we'll get things all set up there and then we'll go over to our other computer and get it installed on Windows and you'll see this is a pretty quick and easy process there's not too much involved here we go it's gonna do its little thing and uh, we're just gonna check uh, uh, um, do 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 the encrypted daily, daily track mm, no we're good for right now I guess I could add my downloads folder so I'm just gonna go here and then we're just going to go here and we're going to label it rpi4 downloads and then for the identifier you can put it as uh, whatever you want uh, our rpi4 downloads and then the folder path we are going to actually remove that and then we're gonna just scroll down to, uh, we should have a downloads one here somewhere. And downloads, there we go. So now we have that selected, our home Pi downloads, and we're gonna save that. So now it's gonna scan it, it's gonna do its thing here, see how much uh, uh, is there but we need to have another computer selected so that way we, we can add it to um, the folder for it to sync to it. So let's go ahead and we will head over to our Windows 7 computer here. I have it up on my Raspberry Pi 4, so it's not gonna be long, so here we go. I'm just gonna bring it up right here. I'm on syncthing.net on my, well, my Gigabyte Bricks unit. And this is the, once again, my computer that I use for just uh, playing around and programs that don't run on Windows 10 and I need Windows 7. So this is what this computer does. It's only meant for obsolete programs and other things. And this is one of those other things. So I'm just gonna go to downloads here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and download the Windows version here. I'm going to go for the 64-bit and then we'll get that going and it's just gonna do its thing here 
and then we'll go ahead and we will go to show in folder here there we go and here we are and then I'm going to just extract it to its own folder here by right clicking on it and then now we should be able to just take this here I want to cut that I want to put that you can put this wherever you want I just don't want it to be in my downloads folder because sometimes I like to move things around there so you know what let's for this one we'll just put it on the desktop here and uh, so I'll put it up here but I want to have the icon on the desktop so we don't need to worry about that anymore so this guy can just go up here and now we should be able to launch that we want to allow access and then it's just going to bring up our user interface here I did uh, close out the one window here at the bottom that's uh, outputting the terminal commands just because it did have my actual IP address in there so just for fun that's not there on this computer here I'm going to go to well once it's done loading this computer is a bit slow so it says unknown device but I think it'll probably pick up there it is game tech PC I wonder if I can edit that now oh, let's go to no again here I want to add a folder and then I want to go to uh, the folder I want is pi4 stuff so this is stuff that I'm working on this uh, machine uh, it's gonna automatically sync up to my Raspberry Pi so that way I don't have to worry about it. Look at that. Got some stuff coming here. Maybe I'll show a little bit of that stuff in another video coming up. Cool little display and uh, some nice little speakers. Uh, so Pi 4 stuff or I guess we can we'll just call it Raspi stuff and then the folder ID Raspi stuff and then we're gonna change this folder here because I actually want to find the folder on my desktop here um, so we can go here desktop let's see here so I have it pi stuff here so I'm just gonna go ahead I'm gonna bring up this guy again and then I'm just gonna label this folder here pi stuff and then I'm gonna go back up to the sharing here uh, let's go to save so now I should be able to go to add remote device here's my nearby device here and we will call this one the Pi 4 and then we can go to here and we can select what we want to share with it we can do this when we create the folder but the first time it can be a little bit finicky so what I want to do is I want to auto accept uh, create or share folders that this device advertise at the default path so add device from there and then advanced and we can select whatever here as well incoming rates outgoing rates but because uh, it shouldn't be a problem let's try this so now if we go over to the Raspberry Pi 4 here it's gonna bring up that I want to connect to it so on the Raspberry Pi it's asking me do I want to allow this so you always get that option to accept add the device and then we're gonna go to sharing we're gonna add the Raspberry Pi 4 downloads do the auto accept the default folder I'm gonna delete that because I don't need it 
and then there we go we're all good uh, to allow that to sing so I'm just gonna give that a moment here and it's probably gonna take a moment to just do its thing here Raspberry Pi 4 downloads so if I go over here now you're gonna see it actually do its thing preparing to sync there we go so this is pulling the files from the Pi 4 and that's basically it uh, as long as you have the actual the sync thing running in the background it should be syncing install sync thing on your Raspberry Pi add the folders install it on your other device add the folders add the Raspberry Pi go on to the Raspberry Pi it's gonna ask do you want to allow it select yes and then give it the permissions that you want to have it now this is all just on uh, my network so it has no outside interference at all this is just through my network so it's nice safe and I can add whatever folders I want so I could go ahead now and automatically add just on my Raspberry Pi um, all the folders that I want to keep backed up onto my other computer and it's automatically gonna go ahead and do that for me so that's it for me for today if you like this video give the old thumbs up thumbs down whatever you want make sure to hit that subscribe button thank you for watching everyone you have a wonderful day a wonderful week and we'll see you next time take care eh?